this communication addresses uh, microlith variability during the early later stone age through the analysis of lithic assemblages from three sites located in northern Algeria. Uh, three, these sites are originally disparate and they are characterized by different microlith types. This material culture variability is explored uh, through the lens of chain operatoire. Uh, the integration of typological, technological, and morphometric uh, analysis allow for a better understanding for the site function. Uh, North, uh, North Africa, the latest Paleolithic industries corresponding to uh, the terminal Pleistocene have been labeled as Ivorm reason for the Maghreb and uh, Eastern Orion for Cyrenaica. Uh, the term of LSA uh, industry, Microlithic Industries was recently suggested instead of Ivorm reason. Uh, for labeling terminal Pleistocene assemblages that share an abundance of baked and retached bloodlets that appear to be largely focused on North Africa, uh, uh, in coastal zones of North Africa. Human remains associated with the very earliest baked bloodlet industries in the Maghreb are assigned to a very distinctive and modern human, uh, so called uh, uh, Meshta Afelu. <coughs> Earliest LSA microlithic industries appeared at Tamarhat at least 25,000 years KLBP. For a period of some 10 millennia, the stone tools industry of North Africa were dominated by microlithic picket bloodless and were synchronous with several paleoclimatic events. Human populations have be, does human population or have human population been affected by the paleoclimatic changes? and that, uh, how these changes have influenced the organization of their microlithic uh, production systems. Almost all scholars who have to deal with North African baked bloodlets use Tixi's epipaleolithic typology to describe them. The typology was explicitly morphological in intent and it's now very widely used in North Africa. This list is successful because this type, in my mind, <laughs> uh, because the types of baked bloodless that Tixi defined have correlates into the archaeological records, and uh, it provides an explicit and widely used definition for baked bloodless. And uh, third and lastly, it has been usefully applied to light paleolithic, epipaleolithic industries from Sinai, Southern uh, Sudan, and uh, so on. In the Maghreb, the morphological variability uh, of microlithic tools has been interpreted to represent distant cultural communities. This interpretation relates back to the mid debate about <coughs> microlith variability, uh, referring to my, uh, chronological dates and uh, uh, and uh, sorry, uh, typological list comes so that uh, implicitly several regional facies which maintain a diachronic relationship. Conversely, Brahimi and Omiasip designed the model leading to the identification of regional groups independent from chronological phases. Whereas Close assumed that there is a noteworthy stylistic continuity, which is a key factor in the variability of Beckett bloodlets. But since the 80s, linear conception of comps is increasingly rejected by many scholars who see the album reason as a set of uh, uh, cultural facies with regional particularities in which the environment is a major factor determining the economic and technical choices of Iberum region populations. Systematically produced, microbloodless are a hallmark of the Iberum region and up to now, researchers in the Maghreb have focused primarily on issues of cultural history in which question of um, cultural origin and typology are foremost. Variability in the Ibrahim Rizalitic assemblages still remains essentially guided by uh, the variation of typological tools, of which Beckett bloodless are abundant. However, uh, however, variability can be dependent on the faction of the site, the excavated area, and for the Beckett bloodless of the rate of fragmentation. While the distribution and variability remains an important, sorry, an important variables to track with direct attention to issues involving the role of microlithic technology in adaptive, uh, adaptive strategies. And the objective is to outline some avenues for reflection um, 
on the question of uh, variability for using holistic production systems by using a technological uh, approach. Through the lens of the chain opératoire, every tool, of course, is a product of a system, a uh, technological system rooted in a context, uh, contextual, cultural context. Choices made by the neighbors were recognized throughout the co-reduction processing and transformation of produced blanks as well as the research of the vintage methods. Differences in intent and function are an important factor in contributing uh, to uh, the artifact function. And the recognition of damage patterns characteristic and of hunting uh, has significance for reconstructing subsistence behaviors. Uh, back to the sites, uh, Tamar Hat uh, and Rassel uh, are caves, uh, both in a mixed landscape of mountain, forest, and coastal plains. Wild Columnata is an open air site on the high end line semi plateau area, far um, about two kilometer hundreds from the sea. At uh, Tamar Hat Rock Shelter, population practiced selective hunting that directed primarily towards barbary sheep in late autumn and early winter. At Russell, uh, information are lacking, uh, uh, and uh, for uh, Columnata, uh, the occupants frequented the site in late summer and early autumn, and the population, population practiced handed, oriented towards Alcelafius. Lithic assemblages of Tamarhat belong to the western sector towards the front of the wreck sh shelter excavated by Saxon. The exp excavated area includes uh, 85 seven grouped into six stratigraphic zones uh, dated between 20,000 and 16,000 years BP. While the uh, lower layer of Russell is dated on snail shells uh, by uh, 14,000 uh, years BP. And the uh, columnata is dated on lacustrine shells by late uh, 10,000 years BP. All phases of uh, co-reduction are well represented and the transformation of blanks took place at the sites. And the abundance, of course, of the artifact is a major set for the reconstruction of technical behavior of human groups during this period. There is a massive production sorry, uh, of lamellar blanks of which a large amount is retouched into Beckett bloodlets. And uh, Tools are largely dominated by lamellar blanks, often transformed, uh, transformed into Beckett bloodlets. Did the management rules uh, of microwave production system remain unchanged all this time? The results of the technological analysis tend to prove otherwise. The neighbors of Tamar had exploited, uh, for the most part, silicious rock available as pebbles, which were collected. Uh, in the uh, local alluvium and uh, marine deposits. The same raw material procurement strategies were preserved throughout all the occupations and also at the uh, lower layer of Russell. In contrast, the uh, neighbors of Columnata favored local voluminous blocks in, uh, manufactured uh, on uh, two kinds of uh, chalcedony, uh, even if they were not satisfactory. The maintenance of the uh, raw material procurement strategies is uh, uh, similar and uh, indicate a recurrent territorial in, uh, organization and reduce mobility uh, as well. The blanks of Tamarhat were mainly produced by implementing a single and complex chain operatoire of laminar production, which integrated unidifferential blanks deriving from the same chain operatoire. Uh, dom the dominant scheme corresponds to an abandoned debitage primarily oriented to produce bloodlets from reduced prismatic and superamidal cores with single striking platform, often uh, generally faceted. Baked blanks were extracted as end products by unidirectional convergence removals that prog progressively expanded to adjacent faces that's given a semi turn en front. And the laminar blanks from plein débitage are obtained using the mineral soft hammer percussion uh, according to a shallow direction. 
This technique is well suited to the production of regular bloodlets in this context uh, during uh, plant depitage. Production of rectilinear platelets intercalated with the production of longer platelets using the same rational sequence is also known. While micro platelets with a curved profile were produced from robust byproducts deriving from the same chain operatoire, considered typologically as unscrapers. Other robust byproducts were exploited as platelet curves either by using the uh, burning core technique on truncation or um, extracting curved platelets from the lower surface. In the upper occupations of Tamarha, the semi tournant debitage strategy occurring in previous occupation was abandoned, abandoned sorry, in favor of a simple debitage which exploited the nav natural convexities of the curve. From a single and preferentially plain striking platform, the extracted laminar blanks are medium sized. The alternate debitage become scarce, scarce or rare, and the alternate debitage becomes scarce while the production of micro bloodless derived from end scrapers curse disappears. Burning curves become scarce also and no longer have a truncation. Moreover, Sorry, a new scheme uh, appears uh, which exploit the uh, uh, blocks uh, uh, well suited to uh, the flint pebbles. This scheme is related to the production of irregular blades with irregular shape. The retached tool assemblages at Tamarhat consists primarily of non geometric microliths which have high variability and derived from the various technological schemes uh, preview, uh, previously cited. Selected lamellar blanks into lower occupation shorter, are shorter and narrower, requiring an elaborate shaping of sequences. <coughs> Metrical data of these microliths correspond exactly to the minimum size of rejector, uh, rejected prismatic and subpyramidal curves. These microliths are massively retouched into Beckett bloodlets, acute blood, uh, into acute Beckett bloodlets, preferentially with semi abrupt and Ustatar uh, retouch. Angular Beckett bloodlets are also encountered in the lower occupations in small amount. Micro bloodlets and burying spores produced from minority schemes are seldom retouched and are restrictive to the lower occupations. These microliths might have been produced for an incidental task. Beckett acute bloodless with retouched beds are more common in the upper uh, occupation. It's only, sorry, it's only from the upper occupations that new ob objectives appear leading, leading to the production of robust and elongated lamellar blanks with a slightly curved profile. They are preferentially transformed to uh, acute Beckett bloodlets and to a less extent to partially Beckett bloodlets having a microburin scale. This coincides with the change in core reduction strategies <coughs> beginning at the end of the late maximum glacial. Beckett acute bloodlets with retouched base are more common in the upper occupations, and this may be due to paring down the, uh, the uh, base of for handling constraints. The scarcity of cross abrupt, abrupt retouch at the upper occupation is probably related to the selection of blanks that were narrower and thinner, thus requiring a, sta uh, a slight reduction in width. Indeed, the recognition of impact damage patterns characteristic of hunting with shipper stone projectile are well as attested throughout all the occupations which validate the hypothesis of, uh, sorry, uh, which, uh, sorry. Uh, it's worth noting that the production of this robust and elongated Beckett bloodless coincide with the change in core reduction strategies. The recognition of impact damage patterns characteristic of hunting with shipped stone projectile are well attested, uh, as I said, uh, uh, which validates the assumption of, uh, it's not hypothesis of the return from the hunt. 
This is in agreement with the archaeozoological analysis of uh, mammalian assemblage. The existence of proximal and distal fragments involved elements mounted actually, actually at the tip of the first shaft. The proximal fragments can be introduced into this site mounted actually uh, the proximal fragments can be introduced into the site as points still embedded in their shaft where yet the distal fragments are contained in the game brought back to this site <coughs> however major fragments may suggest that pieces were mounted on the site of an row for shaft Unfortunately, no ongoing uh, component uh, of hats uh, were discovered uh, in uh, the Maghreb. Does the coexistence of this, of, uh, this supposed hafting types suggest variability within the same technical traditions? Or whether should we consider the question in terms of a variation of suitable size game mounting? Functional analysis of microitis and going uh, the study, of course, is based on experimental and uh, uh, with my colleague and uh, archaeological uh, uh, pieces. Here we applied pre-Milan results uh, of uh, one uh, big bloodlet coming from uh, belonging to the upper uh, layers of Tamar Hat. Uh, this big bloodlet shows microscopic polish patterns related to skin working preserved on this side opposed to the big edge. This leads to uh, this. This leads to assume that there is no direct causal relationship form and uh, between form and function, at least for Tamar Hat and this uh, Beckett bloodless. The selected and short, uh, the selected short and narrow lamellar blanks are extracted at Rassel from superamidal and prismatic prismatic uh, uh, curves. Selected blanks were intended to be transformed into Beckett bloodlets. But partial, partial, partially baked acute bloodless using the micro. Sorry. So, uh, baked uh, bloodlets were uh, extracted from prismatic and superamidal cores at Russell. Uh, they looked for uh, shortened and regular laminar blanks detached from these cores. And the laminar blanks are extracted as end products with uh, using. using using, uh, of course, uh, mineral soft hammer percussion. The alternate lamellar debitage is rarely attested, and the debitage uh, conducted on bearing curves performed along the edge of the, of the curve is systematically prepared on a plain striking, uh, stri striking platform. The selected shirt and narrow lamellar blanks are extracted from superamidal and prismatic redu uh, reduced bloodlet curves and were intended to be transformed into Beckett bloodlets. The partially Beckett acute bloodlets using the microburin blow technique are numerous and Ustata Ritash is uh, also well represented. The presence of few fragments of narrow Beckett bloodlets with impact damage confirms the return of the hats in which they were embedded and uh, this can, uh, the presence of major fragments can be explained by the existence of two types of hafting. With the last site, with the onset of the Holocene, microliths of columnata were obtained from various schemes, some of which are reserved for a particular type of raw materials. The microliths are obtained either on prismatic or superamidal curves. Uh, with a broad surface debitage or on bearing curves mostly dihedral. Moreover, a uh, carinated and globular debitage, which are two new schemes of debitage without retinal processing, appeared for the first time in this site. The former is only applied to bloodlet curves on flint pebbles to produce short and wide microliths from a carinated debitage surface, while the latter is devoted to globular curves napped without visible organization on large blocks of chalcedony. <coughs> the existence of an autonomous debitage of plates and flakes is in strict contrast with methods known at the previous sites. Blades were obtained with hammer percussion. 
uh, hard hammer percussion and differently from a broad or narrow debited surface, various flags were detached from coarse nappity curtain to three mean skins. Like lithic assemblages of the previous sites, those of Tamar of Kuluna Tasuri are rich in archaic baked bloodless obtained using the microburin blow technique. The occupants of this site looked for large and thick blanks uh, for, uh, for uh, half time purposes. This is in agreement with the TT distribution results, which indicate the samples that samples from Columnata are larger and thicker. The calibration of blanks, which were transformed to Beckett bloodless, included bloodlets as well as flakes, and often used an abrupt to cross retouch. The robustness of the blanks involves the massive use of an anvil retouch or of an anvil. This is probably related to a particular type of hefting. Very few pieces have or show patterns of pressure retouch applied either for paring down the basal parts of the tips and the manufacture of baked, blood, uh, baked edges. This is a technical feature exclusive to columnata assemblages. The return from the hand is evidenced by the presence of fragments with impact damage. The uniformity of wide thickness values of values of baked bloodless fragments at Tamarhat and Russell is very marked compared to columnata where robust pieces were preferred. This is likely due to the contrast of hefting. Thus, the massive blanks of columnata were probably intended to be mounted at the actually at the tip of the foreshaft. <coughs> Yes. To conclude, regional and chronological variability in microlith forms has been interpreted to represent distinct cultural groups. However, the interpretation is challenged by our results, which indicate that microlith uh, form was the result of different reduction strategies. Changes between early and late algorithm reason are likely to be product of changes in timing of technique of co reduction strategies which is in turn were due to changes in hunting strategies. Thus, weapons design systems and hunting strategies are the prime agents contributing to the variability of these microliths. The different geographical areas seem to cover variable economical entities, which would suggest whether a new adaptation of the same population to different ecological niches. <coughs> this is in agreement with the previous authors that the eyebrow reason is a set of cultural facies with regional variabilities. However, the maintenance of the same raw material procurement strategy, as well as the continuous use of microburin technique, blau technique, and the persistence of the use of mineral soft hammer percussion, shows a diachronic continuity in the method of producing microliths and is a strong argument for cultural continuity. Thank you for your attention. Uh, yes. do, we, yeah, do we have questions? Uh, Steve? Uh, Tixier's uh, methodology, you say, has worked very well. Uh, are, there any, are there any projects or researchers that, that uh, have problems with Tixier working in North Africa? Uh, I tried to, um, to answer in English, but... Uh, okay. do, did anyone have a question? Uh, Tixier uh, is uh, the tip. Tixier is uh, the um, the list of Tixier is very widely used by North African researchers and uh, Levant as well uh, in Sub-Sahara. But I think that uh, uh, it needs to uh, uh, this list needs to be improved by using the technological approach because we have to include to take into account the behavior. Uh, the gesture, gesture and the choices. Because we see uh, neighbors of Columnata had the choice to go far away to seek after uh, good varieties of flint. flint. But uh, they used Chalcedony, which wa was uh, less, uh, which was not uh, very good to nap, but uh, I don't Yeah, but when, 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 when someone defines a, a triangle, a, a triangle, everybody knows what that is, correct? Triangle, triangle. Uh, uh, you, uh, lunate. Ah, uh, lunate. 
Okay, uh, in epipyolytic uh, typologies, there are microliths. What we uh, call about microliths is uh, are uh, all blanks uh, of which the edge of one edge was baked. There are no uh, geometric microliths except of uh, segments. Lunates. Still, uh -huh. yeah. When you look on the Maghreb and in the Levantine. Uh, uh, typology. So you have, you have uh, a Tixier and then you have Jean Perrault and after offered by yourself, which have a very uh, systematic typology. So mm -hmm. usually when you're speaking about lunar or about curve point uh, or uh, other types or barren point, or everybody more or less knows because it's a very systematic link, so at least like a white point, so people know that it's, uh, uh, I don't know, uh, M31, or they know where is it in the list, mm -hmm. and they can compare the list and, and find it both in Tixier typology and Brision typology and in offered by yourself. So but what would happen if you had a, a lunate that was more than 50 millimeters long? Good, <laughs> good question. Um, if it will be one, it's not a problem <laughs> because you, you because you you always have variant, right? Uh -huh. I, there is diver. We can also right, put there. You can tell me. I probably will put them inside the 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 back in, inside the, the group of the geometric blade or something. Like that. So I'll do and I will explain. You I will add it to the list. If the list is ending, I don't know, 100, I will put it in 101 and, and explain to it. And I say, okay, in this region I have a new type, which is a large, large unit. I think that that's what I will do by heart, by stomach, if you ask me. <laughs> Thank you. Sorry. Yeah. I think one other thing that your data seemed to show quite clearly, I continue on your comment, Steve, uh, and the reply, um, is that one of the problems with arbitrary size cutoffs, uh, the 50 millimeter length size cutoff for micro and macro, I think, uh, uh, yes. is we see with your <coughs> data distributions, those <coughs> your, your box and whisker plots, everything was yes. under 45 millimeters in length. Yes. So in that distribution, we're including 5% material that's macrolithic in the microlithic category at every single one of your sites. So why do we not then just use the distribution of the data to show us what the assemblage composition looks like? Why do we need an arbitrary because size cutoff? If we take a uh, coordinate assemblage, uh, we have to take into account that there was an autonomous uh, debitage of flags and because the edge is reduced. So we can have 9 millimeter, but at the beginning it was way <coughs> wider because yeah. it was a plate yeah. or plate. Yeah. So if we use just morphometric, we can't have, we don't, we won't have an idea of the chain operatoire, and uh, thus we cannot make differences between uh, uh, other assemblages to have a, a global uh, idea about uh, the uh, skills of these uh, networks. I think. Uh, but does each piece not contain the information of its production process? Yeah. Do we need to classify it as microlithic in order to to study its process? No. Can we not tell from the piece itself and the cores how they were made? 99% of the case, no. From a fake, yeah. you cannot tell. Yeah, most of the case, like. They're broken, they're braided, they're rolled, they're surface collection. They're right. we're, we're talking about statistics, sure. basically. Mm -hmm. And we're talking about um, um, the, the fact that you can put the line somewhere. It's not because he decided he liked the number five. Because this is how the world react. I mean, the great, ma great majority of, of these types, this is where, they, where you can put the line. Yeah. Now, there's always a um, diver. <laughs> Always a tool that don't behave. We're, we're not talking about machine made, right? We're, these are people producing flakes. So not everybody is good in, as, as a napper. Not a, uh, you have a bad day. 
or you want to show off and produce a large one. But statistically, it behaves very well. But it seems like with Latifah's data, um, the, the, the numbers she was presenting were mean values, not outliers. Um, and in all of the cases, the mean value was 25 millimeters. So if the world behaves in a 50 millimeter way, why in North Africa do we have the mean behavior, not showing off or trying to do something idiosyncratic, but the mean modal behavior in North Africa is to produce things 25 millimeters in length. Uh, you said not ask why. <laughs> I said not to about 25 millimeters because the, the uh, uh, blocks used by the nippers were collected in terraces and marina uh, collected, and they are not bigger than 75 uh, centimeters. So uh, their reduced volume of the block initially reduced. So, par conséquent, uh, the mm. <laughs> consequently, the size of microliths will be reduced. Mm -hmm. But the question is that uh, comparing to Colinata, microliths were uh, thinner and wider because uh, calcedony were collected not into, uh, into the shape of uh, pebbles, but uh, uh, brick <coughs> blocks. So they had to gear uh, the chain operatoire producing plaques and then uh, to reduce, to have, uh, to obtain a, a baked bloodlet. So I mentioned that uh, there are uh, uh, impact fragments, uh, impact damage on the microliths and the reduced is uh, related uh, to uh, constraints uh, of hacting. I think the hat is a big question. We have to, to know why they produce that for uh, what uh, purpose. I think. Maybe one more thing. I think in the same time period, in, in, in the southern Levant in Israel, uh, the mean average of, of retouched uh, tools is probably very similar. It's probably 25 uh, millimeters and not 50, but that's one category of, of, of the chaîne de of the technology, because obviously it, it was produced uh, in some cases from much larger blocks. So it may be a minority within the overall uh, assemblage, but it's still the focus of, of the retouch tools will be that length, and not, and not 50. And again, it depends what time period you're talking about in, in, uh, in, uh, in, the, in the frequency. Uh, you need to remember that you're starting with a blend that is probably larger, and then all you cut it by microfluor technique or by snap the, the blend Originally larger, and you could make two lunettes from one blade. Um, I think, uh, uh, yeah, when we're talking about these typologies and how you end up with, you know, uh, uh, um, a seuil. A step. A, a step, no, no, a, a break. Yeah, a break, a seuil. Uh, a limit. A limit, yes. So uh, a limit or averages and sizes, and you take this typology, you try it, apply it somewhere else, and, and, and it doesn't work. I think what we're really pointing on here is something, uh, is something that can be used uh, for this definition of microliths that you want to come to is, uh, uh, would be this element of modularity. I think that would be important to, to, to pull out of this discussion where we're talking about you know, uh, these uh, mean sizes that, of course, when we apply one typology to another region, well, it doesn't work. Well, it can work, but you have to modify it. But uh, uh, what is the, the cause of this uh, systematiz systematization of the size would be the, the, uh, looking to make a, a modular type product, type product. And I think we, maybe we could pull that out of this discussion. Do, do they have to be hafted to be used? Yeah. If it, for mod modular projects, I don't no, know. No, modular. It, 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 it would be, it, the function would have to imply a very, very specific shape. And if that function is just, I don't know, related to the hand or to a half, it's still related to the function. Right, and now we're referring to retouched small tools. Mm. But the unretouched ones, do they have to be hafted to be used? Yeah, it's a very important question. Yeah, it's true that uh, when uh, this behind this question of uh, of uh, migrating is a question of hafting, and if you have to uh, remove in the same in the same uh, manche, I don't know the word manche, uh, uh, half support, half to, uh, in several times the same exactly the same size or not of uh, of uh, of, of migrate, and it depends uh, on what, 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 what is the system of hafting, of course, mm -hmm. but when it's uh, it's clear here that the question of weapon is uh, central. 
uh, if you have one kind of weapon, it's a, this part is only one part of a whole system, and and you and and, and, and explain very well why you have a, a size of uh, hydraulics which is very normalized because the the, the weapons need it, particularly if it's uh, arrows, for instance, and it seems that it could be arrows in, in that case. But um, here, going back to Clement's point of much earlier in the uh, in the previous session. Is the emphasis on hunting derived from the fact that you did more macro fracture analysis on more pieces and fewer micro wear because it takes longer? Do we, you know, is that a product of preservation? Um, and sure. like, do we know that hunting was necessarily more important here, or is it just that we have more hunting scars um, because more pieces were analyzed for them? Mm -hmm. Experimentalism uh, study is ongoing, but uh, um, for Tamal Hat, uh, uh, it um, it is very easy to 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 see that uh, residues organics were well preserved comparing to the other sites. That's why we have uh, more uh, the analysis was more successful than the the, the other uh, sites. And uh, as pointed close before that. Uh, because she studied without to her many things for uh, album reason study. Uh, she pointed out that uh, uh, hunting uh, is uh, very difficult to uh, understand because traces patterns were not preserved. And uh, I think uh, it's a big question. Um, okay, with an app to move the hips, uh, so we're not late for lunch. The, uh, just to reiterate, your definition of microliths in this talk was uh, re back, retouch tools, bladelets. Bladelets? Mm, th those are the two primary definitions of microliths. Uh, so, uh, if, uh, to, to sum up, I think that uh, uh, for the three cases, I can't say uh, we can use the same term because uh, they are. Uh, there are many different uh, chain operatoires, uh, but uh, the, pro the end products are so many different for uh, Corinata. So I think that uh, uh, using, until now, up to now, using microliths uh, for, uh, baked microliths for North Africa is more useful than uh, another term. I think it's my opinion. Back, back to microliths. Yes. Baked, baked yeah. microbes, baked okay. microbes. I agree. Just for the record, just so we know each person's <laughs> definitions. Uh, yeah. Thank you so much.